Hey guys, I'm Rhonda Draculis, and I'm about to flood you with information about how to do a flood coat. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. I have a lot of people text and email me or Facebook me and ask me, what exactly is a flood coat? And how come you don't flood coat the pieces that you do on YouTube, the tutorials that I show you guys? One is most of the tutorials on YouTube are just samples of different finishes uh, that you guys can do. They're recipes, basically. So I really don't flood those sample boards. However, I do flood sample boards that I take and present to potential customers. I also flood coat all of our countertops or any kind of crafting or furniture piece that I do. So why do we use a flood coat? What is a flood coat? A flood coat is really basically just a clear coat of epoxy that you put on after you do your design work. It's the last coat of epoxy that's gonna go on your piece. Okay, so why do we use a flood coat? A flood coat is going to bring back durability to the finish. On our color coat, we're adding a lot of different additives. We're adding spray paints, mica powders, dyes, all of that. And that within itself can compromise the integrity of the epoxy. Also, we wanna make sure that it's food safe again. So by putting that clear epoxy flood coat, we're gonna make sure that our surface has the maximum durability and is completely food safe. Now, depending on what product you use, and we use Stone Coat Countertop, that's gonna determine how much epoxy you use for your flood coat. With Stone Coat, we use three ounces per square foot, and the only thing that I ever really add to my flood coat is maybe a little bit of diamond dust or gold dust because it's such a very fine particle and it doesn't change the color uh, and it doesn't really do anything to the integrity of the epoxy. It just kind of has those little particles and adds a little bit of a shimmer. So how do you prep your surface to get ready to pour? First of all, you want to make sure your surface is clean. So I like to clean first before I start sanding with isopropyl alcohol. And it doesn't have to be 91% or higher on this step. It could actually be 50 to 70%. I know the 91% is kind of hard to find. So for this part of just the cleaning, you can use the lower percent alcohol. All right, so once you've uh, cleaned it, now we're gonna sand. The reason I don't like to sand immediately without cleaning it, because if I've let this set for just a little bit, uh, maybe it's gotten some oil or grime or fingerprints, um, if I go directly in and start sanding that, I have um, a possibility of taking all that dirt and that grime and pushing it down into the surface. So that's why I wanna clean it first before we start sanding. All right, so this is 220 grit and you can use an orbital sander um, if you've got a big piece you can definitely use that sander but you want to be very careful on your edges for this demo i'm just going to use my little hand sander now when you're sanding you don't have to get super aggressive unless you have some imperfections that you're trying to take care of in this case i had a little dimple so I'm just gonna sand that out. All we're doing is creating a surface where the next layer or our flood coat can take a bite and have something to hold onto and form a mechanical bond between this coat and our flood coat. So for my edges, I like to take off my sandpaper and just very lightly do the round over because this is gonna be where your epoxy is the thinnest and I wanna make sure I don't burn through that material. Once I've sanded, I'll re-clean with the alcohol. Okay, so now the surface is prepped and ready to pour. Okay, one scenario where you're gonna prep a little bit differently is if you have a finish where you used spray paint and that spray paint stayed 
on the surface of the epoxy. In this case, this is the Rust-Oleum metallic fast drying paint. So that paint doesn't really blend in to the epoxy. It has a tendency to just lay on top. So if I were to get aggressive with sandpaper on a finish like this, I would scratch my um, spray paint. So one way around that is to actually pour a flood coat when your color coat, which would be the first coat, is still a little bit tacky. That way you don't have to sand it in order to cause a bond. If you pour when the epoxy is still tacky, say about 10 or 12 hours old, depending on the temperature where you poured, then if you pour a flood coat, it's gonna create a chemical bond instead of a uh, mechanical bond, which is what you create when you sand. So the way to tell if it's the right time is when you touch the top, you want it to be a little bit tacky, but you don't want it to be so tacky that when you touch it and pull it, that you get any of that on your fingers. You don't want it to be stringy. You want it to feel kind of like a piece of very sticky tape. That's when you know you can go ahead and pour your flood coat. Okay, another scenario where you wouldn't want to aggressively sand before you pour your flood coat would be a color coat where you used the Montana Marble Spray. In this um, specific piece, which we actually have a video on it, um, we use the Montana Marble Spray on top of the wet epoxy. So now that it's dry, I'm not gonna be able to sand this without scratching the finish. So what we would do to kind of create that bond that we need is get some xylene and very lightly go over the top and it would kind of reactivate the epoxy, cause it to be a little bit tacky, and then you could pour your flood coat. Now be very careful when you're using the xylene. You wanna do a test area first and make sure that that doesn't pull your product off the top. So if you're doing a type of finish like this, where you know you're not gonna be able to sand in order to put your flood coat, be prepared and have everything ready to do your flood coat about 10 to 12 hours after you finish your first layer or your color coat. Guys, if you have some issues with your edges, maybe your edges are too thin, you've got some imperfections, or you just wanna have one more layer of protection, what you can do before you pour the entire flood coat is mix up just enough epoxy to do your edges. Then put the epoxy in your hand, rub your edge so that the epoxy is just being applied to your edge. If it gets on top, that's okay, because when we pour the final flood coat, all of that's gonna level out and you'll never know that you had an uneven surface here. What that does is now this edge has one more layer of epoxy, giving it more durability than if you just did one single flood coat. Okay, so let's get ready to pour our flood coat. I'm gonna mix up um, three ounces per square foot of the regular stone coat countertop epoxy. Now, if I were going over a white or a very light colored surface, I would want to use my art coat. Same principle of mixing, same durability, except the art coat has a lot more UV protection. You want to make sure that your color coat was done with art coat as well. All right, so I like to pour part B first. Part B is thinner, less viscous, so it just gives me a little bit better um, more accurate measurement when I put B in first. If you don't and you put A in first, that's fine. All right, for this small amount, I could hand mix it, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose to use my mixer. I wanna mix for two minutes, mixing very slowly. I don't wanna turn my mixer on really high. After I mix with the mixer, I'm gonna wanna come in with a stir stick and scrape my edges and then hand mix. What this does is it takes any of that material that's on the edge that hasn't been mixed up correctly or thoroughly and really make sure that it's all mixed. That way when I pour it on the surface, I'm not gonna get any sticky spots. All right, so I said earlier that I wanted to add a little bit of diamond dust or gold dust. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. This stuff can really take over your finish and take away from the pattern. So this is 
the amount of the gold dust that I'm gonna put in there. Very tiny amount. Now you definitely don't have to do that. You can just barely see. Just enough for your eye to catch a little bit of a shimmer. Now those of you that have watched my videos, you know I really like to use my hands a lot. But this next step, you can uh, use a trial and um, a chop brush. I like to skip that and I use my hand. So when I pour out my material, I wanna pour it into one area. And then when I scrape my edges, I wanna make sure that I take that material and I put it in the center. I don't wanna scrape and put it over here by itself. Because what'll happen is if that material that I'm scraping on the edge is not thoroughly mixed, that this right here could be a potential sticky spot. So what I'm gonna do, take my material, push it over, and I'm gonna make sure that all of this is thoroughly mixed. Okay, next I'm gonna take my hand, and like I said, you can use a trial at this point. Uh, you can even use a roller. Depending on whatever you wanna use, I really like using my hand. So as I'm scooping with my hand, I'm not gonna push it over the edge quite yet. Just gonna push it right up to the edge. And the reason I like to use my hands is because I can then come over the entire surface and I can tell and I can feel if I have material that's too thick on one area. Now let me show you if this were a trial, if I used a trial, how I would do that. All right, so if you decide to use a trial, these trials are a 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trial. They're meant to leave just the perfect amount of epoxy on your surface. So when you trial it out, the same as when you're using your hand, you wanna just cover your surface. Don't push it all the way to the edge. And that way, again, you're gonna get a nice even amount on your surface. All right, now to address your edges, I, this is where I really do like to use my hands. I like to take the epoxy and use my hands to be able to rub it in, and then I push it under and rub it so that now I know that these drips are gonna go down and they're gonna roll under. They're not gonna build up here on my edge and form a little bump. That's why we round over our edges on the top and the bottom so that epoxy really flows and builds the drips a little bit farther back. Now you can see how the epoxy eliminates all those marks from our sandpaper and makes it look like glass. All right, once we've trialed it out, now we're gonna use our torch and get rid of the surface bubbles. When we torch, we'll go about an inch and a half away from the surface and keep it moving and just cover the entire surface. We'll torch it three times, waiting about two to five minutes in between each torching. One thing that I get a lot of questions is, my flood coat ends up with waves in it the next morning. One thing that can cause that is if you torch too late in the pour, say my flood coat's been on for an hour and I come back and I wanna torch it. What that can do is cause the epoxy to have ripples. Also, if you leave an airflow, AC, fan, a window open, any of that will cause uh, some rippling or waves in your flood coat. A couple of other pro tips when doing your flood coat. You wanna try to be in a dust-free environment. Now, I know that's almost impossible. And um, before the Ultimate Top Coat came out, we were really concerned with dust bunnies landing on our surface. But now that we have the Ultimate Top Coat, both in gloss and matte, I really don't worry about that anymore because what I'll do is I'll wait 24 hours, let my uh, flood coat cure, and then I'm gonna apply the ultimate top coat. And that will absolutely take this finish or any finish to the next level as far as your durability. And we do have a video that shows both how to do the matte and the gloss coat 
and you'll find a link to it in the description below. All right, one thing that a flood coat can help to fix is if you happen to use isopropyl alcohol in your design, maybe you mixed it with the mica powders to create a really pretty finish. A lot of times that alcohol will cause little divots and you won't notice it until maybe the next day. Um, so what you can do is don't worry about those divots, sand it, prep it just like you would a regular flood coat. And as soon as you pour that flood coat, all those little divots are gonna get filled in because your epoxy is gonna self level. So that is one thing that really will take your finish to the next level is uh, creating that glass-like finish, self-leveling, and therefore taking care of all your imperfections. Okay guys, until next time, you know what it is. Don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.